on the list that I did not look. Mm -hmm. Is there any public comments? No, I don't think any public comments. All right, if not, the summer review by Mrs. Denman. Okay, so um, we had a very busy summer, as we always do with technology. Um, over the summer, when people say, oh, you work for a school district, you must have your summers off. I would like to those people. Um, but, but I smile and say, oh, no, we work all summer. We're 12 month employees. So I just want to give you a little um, overview, again, about what we do accomplish over the summer so you have a little idea of what's going on. Um, within the district to get us prepared for the new school year. Oh, my goodness. Somebody get me a text. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. All right. So there we go. Um, so we had a couple big network upgrades um, over the summer. One of the things that we did um, in the beginning of August was we replaced the core switch in the um, uh, server room. So we went from one Cisco Catalyst core switch to another, an updated one. Uh, the old one was seven years old at this point, so it was also at end of life. So the core switch is kind of the brains of everything over there, or one of the brains of everything. Um, so it uh, does exactly what it says. It switches. Um, there's many different inputs that come in, um, and it's kind of the brain of brains of the um, entire network infrastructure over down at the DSC. Uh, we did it on a Friday to um, minimize any kind of downtime impact since we were off on Fridays. We were down for about six and a half hours. Uh, we had a total network outage at that point, or a network blackout. It was probably the smoothest conversion I've ever been involved <laughs> with, with something of this magnitude. We had um, taken the time ahead of time, and we had everything labeled because there's many, many different cables that are coming into the core switch from many different network components. So we had everything labeled. Probably the biggest, the hardest part was it's a very large unit, so it was getting it racked took three different tries until we got it racked and, and, and stacked correctly. But we made it through that okay, and we were back up in six and a half hours. We had given ourselves eight hours, so we came in under time there. That's a win. Yeah, that was a win. So um, one of the other bigger, even bigger projects really was um, the implementation of a new firewall. So you can think of the firewall as kind of the gatekeeper of the whole network. Um, it, is con it controls not only what's coming into the district, but what's going out of the district as well. So it's um, monitoring all the traffic coming in and going out. And this is where you put all your um, rules. So you make sure that uh, you try and keep out the bad actors, so to speak, and you make sure that the students aren't getting to those bad places, so to speak. Um, we, went with, we went from Cisco to Palo Alto. So we kind of jumped the ship Cisco Shark a little bit here. Um, we also got rid of our uh, IBOS content filter, and we do all the filtering now. All the URL filtering is being done on the firewall itself. It's a dual firewall, so if one goes down, it will automatically um, switch over to the second firewall, so we do have um, redundancy built in now as well. We did that on August 21st. It was a Wednesday. It was very minimal downtime. We had everything kind of um, staged prior. Uh, when you switch the firewall, it's kind of an all or nothing thing. So you just unplug the one and plug the other one in and you start to watch, you know, traffic go and you start to look to see if you can get to dirty sites and make sure that, you know, things are being filtered. I saw you raise your eyebrows, but that is what you do, you know, to make sure that, that, um, that it's filtering correctly. So it hasn't come without some lumps. Um, I knew there could be some bumpy path, you know, bumpy points. Um, this past week, we've been tweaking still. We've had some connectivity issues. We haven't had so many filtering issues, but more some connection issues um, with our new um, Global Protect client, which is the new VPN client. So we just had E-plus um, Technologies. They were the engineering firm that actually came in and helped us with this project, and they were back on site today to do a little bit more tweaking. So we've had a few issues, but hopefully we're starting to settle down. I think the users are tired of me sending out all users. Uh, please be aware that we're having an issue here or an issue there, and please thank you for your patience. 
So we're getting there, but the beginning of the school year sometimes, you know, has a few things that we have to overcome. So that's really what we did um, as far as infrastructure. We also have two new wireless controllers that we purchased with E-rate funding. They're racked and stacked over in the DSC, but um, we have not converted yet. We thought we would keep the components, you know, piece by piece rather than trying to do everything at one time. So when we do have an issue, we know, you know, where the issue is coming from. So we're planning um, the end of September to do the conversion to the new wireless controllers. I think we have a day off at the end of September, September 29th or 30th. So we're targeting either that day or I think we have October 9th off then too. I think we have two days coming up. So we're going to target one of those two days because there will be an outage when that occurs and we don't want to bring you know, everybody down when, when that's happening. So part of the meat and potatoes of what we do over the summertime is we will um, collect all the laptops at every different level and we clean them, we re-image them. So starting at the high school, um, our high school uh, work really begins at the end of the school year when we collect all the student laptops from grade 9 to 12. And that's approximately 2,400 laptops if you're figuring 600 students per um, grade class. So uh, what we do with the 12th grade laptops is then we inventory them, we wipe them clean, and we package them up and we ship them back to the leasing company. Um, and then we start the cleaning, re-imaging, and repairing uh, process for the grade 9 to 11 computers. So um, we also were able to um, offer early AP student laptop distribution again this year, which is something that we've been doing for the past couple of years. So it's an opportunity for the AP students to come in and pick up their computers earlier than the regular generate, uh, general population. We had 322 of 463 eligible students take advantage of that early pickup. Mrs. Cullen was one of those people who picked up early <laughs> so uh, for her students. So um, it just gives the AP students a little leg up for any kind of schoolwork that they might have and if they don't have a, a computer real accessible to them at home, we give them their computer back. And by that point in the beginning of August, we're pretty much through all that cleaning and re-imaging. So we're able to do that. And yes, I'm sorry, I spelled the word wrong there. I did see it. I had a QTY there and I changed it and I thought, oh, I don't want to put QTY. I want to spell out quantity. Yeah, name it queen and So anyway, I do apologize for that and I will fix that for the final format uh, to be posted. So um, we purchased or we leased, again, 650 ninth grade laptops. We took delivery of them in mid-June. I thank you for allowing us to go out to actually order a little bit earlier this year. It took a lot of pressure off of us. Typically, we don't get that until mid-July. Um, we actually did the order after the first budget was passed. So the, the preliminary budget, we had talked with Mr. Dalbert, and he said that we could go out and actually place that order ahead of time. So we kind of had it queued up. So when the final budget was passed, then they just were able to release the equipment to us. Um, so we got it in mid-June instead of mid-July. Uh, some of you will remember, I think it was three years ago, where we didn't get it until like the last week of August. I was a little bit concerned about um, delivery of, of some of the components um, based on you know some of the global um, factors going on throughout the world right now and some of like the um, components, we were afraid that we wouldn't be able to get them so early, so we were really grateful that we got them in mid-June. We started to distribute the laptops to grades 10, 10 through 12 the week of August 20th. We had 1,262 students um, come in and pick up their laptops in four days. That is a joint effort between, God love those women in the front office at yeah. the high school because yeah. they verify that everybody has done their um, paperwork before they come in. And then they, um, once they, they actually give them what we call the golden ticket, and they take that down to the library 304 area in um, the uh, high school, and that's where they're actually given their laptop then. Laptops for the ninth graders, they're actually distributed um, during the first week, week and a half of school. Really, it's the first, it's two weeks of school, really. They come down there during their English periods. We started um, distribution on September 5th, so that is still continuing. I think we distribute for another two days 
And what that means is the student gets a, a new laptop that they'll keep for their four years at the high school. And they also go through a little orientation period with it. Um, Kara Gersh provides some Canvas guidance um, and they all the kids just log in. They all know how to use a computer at this point, but we make sure they log in, they authenticate, and they can get around on their computer a little bit. We also replaced 40 plus, I think it was 42 new teacher laptops, so the teachers are on a four year replacement cycle. So that was just at the high school, um, there were about 40 plus teachers who were um, eligible for new laptops. So we did that as well. Uh, what I didn't put up on here is we also collected every teacher laptop this year and we did a wipe and a re-image of the teacher laptops as well. We haven't done a blowout for three years with them, with the teachers, so we thought it was just time to actually just clean things off for them and make sure everybody was up to date. So we're at Windows, I think, 1809 is where we are. Um, so we wanted to make sure everybody was on the same, same version. So the teachers were a little, some of them were a little um, hesitant to hand their computers back in at the end of the school year. Um, I think it was the second week of July we offered that they could start to pick them up again. So we didn't keep them until you know, the end of the summer. They, we did offer times where they could come in and, and pick up their computers. And many of them took advantage of it. Some of them were just, there. I'm on the beach, I'll get it when I come back to school. But many of them did take advantage. Uh, as far as the middle schools, we cleaned and re-imaged the 7th and 8th grade devices. So we took the, we actually moved up from you know, the 6th graders, went up to the 7th grade machine, the 7th grade machine went up to the 8th graders. Uh, their Lenovo's, the 7th um, grade, or the 8th graders have the, no, the 7th graders have the 300E Gen 1's, and the 8th graders have Lenovo N23's. Then we got the new sixth grade devices in, and they were Lenovo 300E's Generation 2. They also came in end of June, so we got them nice and early as well. So again, it took just a lot of pressure off of you know, having to do everything at the last moment. Uh, we spent a lot of time during the summer preparing for the one-to-one -one distribution across all middle schools, and I'll get into that whole process a little bit more in my second presentation. Um, but all the um, laptops have been distributed across the middle schools at this point. At the elementary schools, each elementary school received a new cart um, of 30 Lenovo 300E laptops. It's the same device that the middle schoolers are using. We also removed the remaining iMac labs at Dibler, Grass, Sellersville, and Bedminster. We had been using um, the old iMacs that we had repurposed as Windows machines. I think they were purchased in 2011, I think it is. So we definitely got our money's worth out of those machines. We were unable to um, image them anymore and they were taking more support time than they were worth at this point. So we did make the decision to pull them back because they were becoming um, just too, too um, heavy on the maintenance. So the, schools, the four schools that we did remove the iMac labs. Plus, I think some of those iMac labs were used for the STEM areas as well, so it kind of worked great because we wanted to make them out of there anyway. So we provided a laptop cart for those um, uh, schools that had the, still had the traditional lab, um, and we had taken those laptop carts from the middle schools, and we kind of just cycled them down into the elementary schools because the middle schools no longer need the um, carts because they're one-to-one -to -one at this point. So we were able to just kind of filter them down. And then we clean and re-image every student computer. And this year was a little bit harder on the cleaning because they had all been labeled for carts. So we had to remove all the labels for the carts and clean them all up and a little bit of goo be gone on everything to get rid of the, uh, the actual um, stickers. So we had um, six wonderful interns that worked for the department this year. Um, six young men and women, uh, one is still in high school, the other ones were graduates of Penridge and they were phenomenal workers. So we had five out of the six who were returning from last year. A couple of them were gonna move on and I wish I could just keep them because they were really great young men and women. So, and they're the ones who do the cleaning, so it's kind of thankless, but they do it. And they do it with a smile, they have some fun too. So. I think there's a picture of them handing out 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I think it'll be well received at you know the middle school and the high school level as well. Everything takes time, but we'll get it. Um, data systems that are rolled over, you know, everything is um, very uh, hinged upon our power school student information system. That is really the key to all of our other ancillary data systems. So once we roll, as we say, um, power school, which promotes everybody from grade to grade and school to school, and it takes the graduated students and it puts them into another school and kind of tucks them away then we can actually update all the, the rest of the systems as well, like the busing system, the food services system, library, we have Lincoln, we have Blackboard. So PowerSchool is really the hub, and then from there, everything else gets updated. That happens in the middle of July. Um, I think the rollover was July 12th. So, so everything else kind of between July and all of everything else rolls. Uh, we've been doing the state reporting. Um, it's filed pretty much for the 18-19 school year. I think child accounting collection is still going on. I think that's due, uh, I don't know, Dr. Bolton, maybe you signed off on that already. I know you sign off on all of them. I'm not sure. Did you sign off on that one already? Yeah, they're all due at different times. They're all due so. at different times. So, so anyway, most of that reporting is complete at this point. Um, we spend a lot of time with student account management and new employee account management. We get a lot of new employees over the summertime, and we get a lot of new students, and the new students are continuing to pour into the district, even at this point, even though we're into the second week of school. So that takes a lot of time to get. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, would you think you would know you need to start school prior to the first week of school? Um, so, so it does keep us, you know, kind of busy um, on the data side with just keeping everybody up to date and new, new employee accounts as well. One thing that um, we also worked on over the summer and that this had to do with PSCP as well is uh, it's called one rostering and what this has allowed us to do for many of the applications that we utilize on a regular basis not only from the elementary schools but up through the secondary schools as well is it now actually takes it the one roster server takes a sweep of power school and everything is in power school as far as all the um, enrollments and the one roster actually goes in and grabs those enrollments brings them into another server and then it feeds out more of the ancillary systems. So we use Connect Ed, we use Study Island, we use Everyday Math. So rather than somebody having to, every time a new student comes in, create their accounts manually, it's being created um, automatically now. So it's a real time saver, not only for a test, but it's a time saver for the supervisors and for the teachers as well, because some of those systems, whenever a new student comes in, we have to say, Hey, we have a new student, you need to create an everyday math account. Somebody would have to create the everyday math account or the, the um, study island account. So it's working out really well. And again, it's we're walking before we can run. I think we have like seven applications that are being one rostered this year, and then we'll keep adding to that as we go to the next year. So that is a little bit of what we did over the summer. Actually, that's a lot of bit of what yeah. we did over the summer. Um, so we're off and running. Like I said, there were a couple bumps. There's still a few bumps that we're um, working our way through. But all in all, uh, we're up, we're running, um, and hopefully we're going to have a great year once things uh, settle down. So, any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Sounds like you're after summer off. So yeah. I did. I did my summer off. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so I, I'm the next one on the agenda again, so I want to give just an update on the middle school one-to-one. -one. Um, so we're really excited about the rollout of the laptops for the middle school students. We started on last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is when we distributed the, the laptops to the middle schools. If, again, this was a joint effort between curriculum and technology and actually the buildings as well. So um, eighth grade across the district was on Wednesday distribution, seventh grade was on Thursday, and then sixth grade was on Friday. So it was three full days. The students came down in their social studies classes. I think I go on to this one here. So they came down in their social studies classes and we had um, a, an assembly line set up in each one of the schools. Uh, distribution took place from in, within the auditorium. 
Um, the student came in, they took a laptop, they sat down in the auditorium, we had them sit every other seat and every other row, and they logged onto the computer, and then we did a presentation, a very short presentation, we only had 44 minutes, so a um, very short presentation on student responsibilities of the computer, uh, how to use it at home, and then um, we showed them PSD key as well. Again, we didn't have a whole lot of time with them because um, the social studies teachers actually lined them up in alphabetical order for us, brought them down to the auditorium. They had a card with their username and password on it and a barcode. Um, so it all took a little bit of time, but we were able to get between 30 and 60 students, depending on whether we had one section or two sections, through in that 44 minute period. So we were pretty happy with that. We checked out the devices into the Destiny library system, so now it looks like it's a book. So when you go into any of the students' records in Destiny who are at the um, middle school level, you'll not only see their books, but you'll see their laptops signed out as well. And that way we can keep track of who has what system. Now, I know it wasn't a long period, but I had an opportunity to go to one of the eighth grade and one of the sixth grade, when we got to two of the three middle schools. And between the staff development personnel, the curriculum personnel, mm -hmm. as well as your techs that were there, mm -hmm. it just was amazing in terms of the, the troubleshooting and the knowledge that they could give the students. Because the students you know, can work their way around the mm -hmm. machine, but the devices and the sign-ons and, and where things were, and, and the number of fires they were putting out, and the student go, this isn't working, and yes it is, and you know, all this is things. It really was, it, it really was powerful that the students left 42 minutes later, and the teachers and the students all were like, okay, we got this. Yeah. And so, I mean, I know you're saying, you know, it was, it was relatively quick, but it was significant in terms of having them ready to hit the ground running today in terms of instruction. And, and so I think that just that work and, and the way that your staff inserted themselves, or right? I think sometimes they see themselves as the fix-it people, mm -hmm. as opposed to really let me help the kids, and so I think that was a neat experience for them too, but, but it was really, really well done in terms so, of organization, so thank you. And, and thank you for recognizing that, and yeah, the um, tech integrators and you know the three techs who are at the middle school, um, who are the middle school staff, um, they really did do a great job, they really did. But the teachers did a really great job too. So we had the building principals were in there helping. I mean, we had you know just some TAs were in there helping. I was at North and I had a substitute. He was in there helping. So I mean, wherever they could help, we had like the extra sets of hands. So it really did come together well because I'm not gonna say I was stressed a little bit over that. But I was stressed a lot of it over how that was going to go, but I was really pleased with the way it went. And it seemed to go well across all three schools. So and I'm sure every that. computer was fully charged first thing this morning. So, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so they did take their devices home. They came back today. We had a few little glitches here and there, but but we're we're going to get there. So, what do, what happens when um, the student says, "Teacher, my computer doesn't work." So, there is a computer technician assigned to each middle school, and. The buildings were kind enough to carve out some space for each of them, so they have a little office area and a, a place to actually triage where um, they can laptop issues. So the student is going to is instructed to report any computer issue to the teacher first. Um, we're going to have two loaners and two chargers in each core classroom just for a quick fix. So in other words, if my computer doesn't come up and you know I don't want to have to send Johnny all the way down to the tech support room, there'll be two loaners in each one of the classrooms. Um, the students can be sent to the technology support office. We're going to try either before school, in between classes, or during 11th period. We'll keep tweaking that time as you know we go along and as we start to actually roll through this process and, and the students really using them. If the computer technician can't fix it immediately, the student will be given a loaner. So, and again, that'll go into you know, the destiny system. Um, if the issue can be resolved by the technician, then the student, by, uh, the student, by, the student <laughs> will be notified through the teacher to return to the technology office to pick up their computer. If not, they'll keep that loaner computer and um, the laptop will go out for repair. So um, that's the way the whole loaner process is going to work. If there's accidental damage to the computer, so if the technician sees that there's physical damage to the computer, um, we have a form, and it's an accidental damage protection form. It's patterned after um, what we use at the high school. And the form's gonna be signed by the student, and it'll be sent to the principal as well. 
So they're going to put their name on it, the report of damage, and a description of the accident. Because if they come in with, you know, a cracked screen or a cracked um, case, 